So, you're ready to go camping, but you don't have a sleeping bag. Not to worry, I'm here to help guide you through the process of picking the perfect sleeping bag. Whether it's temperature rating questions or fill questions, you're gonna get them answered in this video where we discuss everything you need to know about sleeping bags to go camping. Let's go. When it comes to sleeping bags, I get asked one question above all others. What temperature sleeping bag do I need? So the general rule of thumb when it comes to picking the appropriate temperature rating for your sleeping bag is to always select a sleeping bag rated 20 degrees lower than the lowest temperature you anticipate to encounter on your trip. This way, just in case the weatherman's wrong, you're not gonna get cold. And let's be honest, sleeping bag science is kind of confusing. Sleeping bag science is a lot like tent math, whereby the manufacturers actively lie to the consumer so that when the consumer purchases the product, they feel like they're getting a really good deal. But the problem is, is that it's just creating confusion and all the big manufacturers do it. The sleeping bag manufacturers are supposed to be using the ISO method of measuring the temperature rating of their sleeping bags. And that basically is an international agreement amongst manufacturers so that way the ratings of sleeping bags are standardized across brands. That's why I appreciate companies where they at least list the three major parameters that you're concerned about when you're buying a sleeping bag. Comfort, limit, and extreme. And although these seem fairly self-explanatory, there's actually a little bit of a breakdown with each one. The comfort limit on a bag is the temperature at which most individuals will be comfortable using the bag. If you use it at its limit, you're likely to have a pretty terrible night's sleep and you're likely to experience a significant amount of cold. If you bring the sleeping bag to the extreme, that means that the sleeping bag will keep you alive, but it may not prevent you from having frostbite or hypothermia. So definitely do not push the bag to the extreme because that can be dangerous. The other important thing to think about when considering a sleeping bag is the shape of the sleeping bag that you want. On my left, I have a mummy shaped sleeping bag. And on my right, I have a traditional rectangular shaped sleeping bag. So we're gonna go through the key differences. This is the traditional rectangular shaped sleeping bag. The rectangular sleeping bag gets its name obviously from its shape. A rectangular shaped sleeping bag is going to have a straight zipper that opens up fully and allows you to crawl on the inside and then zip this up. Much like a regular blanket with a side zipper. The rectangular sleeping bag is the sleeping bag style most commonly used by new campers because it's widely available, fairly inexpensive, and performs the best in warmer weather conditions. The rectangular sleeping bag is the most comfortable style of sleeping bag because it's the style of sleeping bag that offers the most room, allowing the shoulders and hips to move independently of one another versus some of the more constricted sensations you can encounter when using a mummy sleeping bag. This is the mummy bag and it's called a mummy bag because you literally look like you are a mummy wrapped up in a tomb inside of it. They're designed to be tight fitting, not allow a lot of space. And for that reason, some people can find themselves to be a little claustrophobic. In One of the key features of a mummy bag is the incorporation of a hood as well as a distinctive tapering of the bag to close in on the foot box area. Mummy bags are most often designed for cold weather use. That's why you see them incorporate this use of a hood. And the hood always has a drawstring so that when you're inside of it, you can pull this drawstring. And it's just like pulling a hood closed on your jacket where you can pull it right around your face and leave just a little bit of little hole for your nose and your mouth to breathe out of and keep everything else all closed up. The other thing that mummy bags have is something that's called a draft collar. So this is an additional piece of material that is sewn in at the top of the mummy bag and it also has a drawstring that you can pull and see what happens there. It tightens it up 
across the shoulders and across the top of the chest. It's like you're sleeping with that blanket all curled up under your chest, except it's keeping it like that all night long. So when you've got your hood cinched down and the collar <laughs> cinched tight, you've got a bitsy bitsy little space for your nose and mouth to stick out of sometimes the top of your eyes. If you're in the mummy bag and you've got the draft collar drawn and the hood tightened up, when you go to roll over, you're not gonna be able to roll in the sleeping bag. The whole sleeping bag is actually gonna roll with you because it's designed to taper up around the tops of the shoulders and then taper down at the feet. So it's literally like a little cocoon for your body. So when you roll over from your back to your side, the whole sleeping bag is going to shift with you. The second most common question that I get asked is whether or not you should get a down or a synthetic belt sleeping bag. One of the common misconceptions about sleeping bag fill is that down is actually better because it's warmer than synthetic fill, and that is simply not true. Down is a lighter and more compressible than synthetic fill, and that's the only difference. It doesn't impact how warm it's going to keep you versus a synthetic fill. Down is also substantially more expensive than a synthetic fill. So the only time you should even be looking at getting a downfilled sleeping bag is for those situations where you're concerned about weight. If you're backpacking, if you're doing a canoe portage, if you've got a polk sled and you're transporting things from your vehicle to a location remote in the woods, then down's going to be the best bet because it's going to be lighter and it's going to compress down smaller when it's stored so it's easier to fit in your backpack. If you're a car camper where you camp and your car is literally parked right over there, do not waste your money on a down bag. Go for the synthetic every time because it doesn't matter how big that bag is or how heavy it is, you're getting it from point A to point B in a car. So save yourself a substantial amount of money and go with the synthetic. Another big misconception about downfilled sleeping bags is that the higher the number of the downfill, the warmer the sleeping bag is. So a lot of people think, for instance, a 20 degree sleeping bag filled with 650 down is less warm than a 20 degree sleeping bag with 950 down. That's completely wrong too. That number you see refers to the fill power. So a 650 fill power versus a 950 fill power. And what that means is that the 650 fill power is going to have more feathers in order to fill up the same amount of space so they don't fluff up as much, which means you need more of them. Versus the 950 fill power is going to be a loftier down. And because of that, you're going to need fewer feathers to fill up that sleeping bag because they're going to loft up and they're going to trap air because those feathers are bushy. If you have two sleeping bags, both rated to 20 degrees, but with different fill powers, the one with the higher fill power number is going to be lighter, but they're both going to keep you the same degree of warmth at the same temperature. Well, now that we've got everything about sleeping bags all straightened out, it's time for you to pick a tent. And if you're having trouble making a choice, I want you to click right over here. That's gonna take you to my ultimate tent guide and help you pick the best tent for your situation.